the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Paul Lucas, Anne Rutherford, and Jackie Cooper. Tonight, Cavalcade presents Winner Takes Life, broadcast direct from New Brunswick, New Jersey, and the campus of Rutgers University. Good evening. This is Paul Lucas. Tonight, the DuPont Cavalcade presents a story of a scientist in search of a life-saving drug. The scientist is Dr. Selman A. Waxman, and Cavalcade pays tribute to his historic accomplishment by bringing you his story directly from the campus of Rutgers University, where his research work was done. Before a theater audience of Rutgers faculty and students, and men and women of the local DuPont plant, Anne Rutherford, Jackie Cooper, and I will bring you the story of a medical fight to the finish. For there is no surrender with micro killers. Only winner and loser. And the winner takes life. Now, Winner Takes Life. Starring Paul Lucas as Dr. Waxman, Anne Rutherford as Julie and Jackie Cooper as Johnny on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Each of us is mortal, vulnerable. And who amongst us has not felt the sword stroke of illness stabbed through him to the bone? Johnny did not know he was dying. And a girl named Julie, who had come to see Johnny's doctor in the Army Hospital that day in 1943, Julie didn't know either. I... I didn't realize Johnny was so sick, Major. Yes, he is, Julie. It's a kind of heart disease. Heart disease? He sounds pretty healthy, I know, and he looks pretty healthy, Julie. But in cases like this, well, we have to watch them carefully. Can't you give him sulfur pills or something, Doctor? Sulfur doesn't work in his particular case. The microbes inside John's system just ignore sulfur drugs. Well, penicillin... Penicillin doesn't hurt these microbes either. Well, then, what can we do? John needs rest. All the hospital care and rest he can get. May I see him, Doctor? Well, I shouldn't do it. He needs to be quiet. But all right. Come on, I'll take you. Please, Hmm? just a minute. Huh? I want to... I want to put on some more lipstick. Here, Johnny, you gold bricker, you. Here's a handkerchief. What for? The lipstick, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julie, Darling. you shouldn't have come. Not, not while I still the have The to... horizontal commando, huh? Hard trouble. Sure, heart trouble, spelled L-O-V-E. Oh, the doctor says it's only a matter of time, Johnny. That's right. Major, no kidding. What's my score on this deal? My heart, I mean. Oh, Johnny. I mean it, Julie. I want you to hear this, too. Johnny, you have a serious heart infection. Now, that's one of those blanket terms that covers a whole medical dictionary. The chances are you'll be up and walking out of here and getting married by the end of summer. Gee, sounds good, Johnny. Chances. What are the odds? Well, Johnny, about 50-50. The second 50 means curtains, huh? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Sulfur won't heal me. Penicillin doesn't help me. These germs might gang up and hit my heart. Is that it? That could happen. Isn't there something? Well, there's research going on all the time. There's a Dr. Waxman over in New Jersey. I hear he's found a drug called streptothrisin. Can't you try it, Doctor? Oh, not yet. It's only experimental. But if the experiments work... If the experiments work, if there's some real proof, we'll use it, Johnny. If there's proof of all the thousand games of chance, There are none whose stakes are as high as the gamble for human life. Yes, the Army doctor was right. At the Agriculture Experiment Station at Rutgers University, Dr. Waxman had a promising new drug with a technically new name, streptothrisin, 
But before releasing the drug to doctors and hospitals, he had to test it carefully, precisely. I I don't get it, Dr. Waxman. Maybe there's something wrong with our testing. Why? What's happened? Well, these mice got their last dose of streptothrysin yesterday. Today they're all dead. Dead? Hmm. Well, now, wait. We inoculated each mouse with disease microbes. We treated each mouse with streptothrysin. Now, the question is, did the disease kill them or the drug? Well, it certainly cleared out the disease germs in the bloodstream of all these mice. They were getting better. Streptothrysin cured them. Ah, sure, it cured them. Then after the cure, it turns around and kills them. Yeah. Cure is worse than the disease. Now, wait, wait, wait. One moment now. Let us go back and figure this out. Where does this drug, this streptothrysin, where does it come from? Oh, from a microbe, the family of actinomyces. Well, now, aren't there any other brothers or cousins in this drug-producing family of microbes? Another microbe, just the stuff, but without the poisonous killing after effect. Oh, yeah, maybe. And a microbe we could use to fight diseases, but not kill our laboratory animals. That's an angle. It might work. A different group from the same family. Exactly. Well, we'll have to drop streptotrisin now. It's too bad. We had such great hope for it. But we'll begin looking for something better. Streptothrysin, the drug of great hope, was put aside that summer of 1943. It was too poisonous for laboratory animals, impossible for humans. As Dr. Waxman and his staff began to probe the unknown again, looking for a better drug, Johnny was lying on his bed in the Army hospital. How do you feel, Johnny? I feel pretty good, Julie. Come a little closer, McGuff. I'll prove it. Come here. Oh, Johnny. The doctor said you're not supposed to sit up. Come on now. Lie back. <sighs> All right. But to tell you the truth, honey, the only thing that worries me is my fever chart. Temperature up and down like a roller coaster. Oh, don't worry, darling. You'll be up and out of here in no time. Oh, uh, yeah? Look, let's face it. You know it and I know it. I'm getting worse all the time. You can't give up hoping, Johnny. Remember the doctor said there was some research going Sure, on. sure, but how long will they take? How much time do they need? Not too long, I hope, Johnny. Not too long. <laughs> Dr. Waxman, how are you this morning? Uh, what makes you so happy? Oh, oh wait, wait, wait till I show you. Here we are. Look, the streptomyces microbes in this test tube look very promising, and they're just what you ordered. They're from the actinomyces family, and they pack a wallop, Dr. Waxman. Hmm, good. Yes, sir. Where do we go from here? Well, when these cultures have matured, we'll filter them. Uh -huh. And I'd like to try matching them against a very tough disease microbe. Well, the salmonellas, the whole food poisoning group. Yes, Al, and one even tougher. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? The heavyweight champ in the first match? How about dysentery, brucellosis, typhoid fever? Sulfur and penicillin don't touch them. We'll try them all, but don't forget, tuberculosis is our greatest enemy. If we can fight that, then maybe we'll have a chance with all the others that sulfur and penicillin don't touch. Ready for testing, Dr. Watson? Not a heavyweight match, Al. Uh -huh. All the test organisms here? Yes, sir, all of them. Enough microbes in here, Dr. Watson, to knock down an army. Well, let's go. Pour in some of the filtrate. Yes, sir. Round one. <laughs> Trial by battle. One microbe one microbe against another in the cloudy test tubes. The filtered extract of streptomyces microbes mixed in silent combat with the disease germs. If only the liquid in the test tubes will clear. How do the test tubes look, Al? Have they cleared up? Uh, hard to tell so far, Dr. Watchman. They're still sort of cloudy. Well, 
open the incubator, Al. Let's see the test tubes today. Yes. Well, well, look at them. Beautiful, clear as water. Well, easy now. We'll have to okay. check. Even, even TB, no growth at all, not a trace of it. Only in the test tube. Only in the test tube. This little success may not mean a thing in white mice or in a sick patient. Oh, maybe, maybe. I, I know we need more tests. And but... we need a name. Well, the drug comes from the streptomyces. We should call it streptomycin. But maybe that sounds too much like our unsuccessful streptotrisin. Oh, it doesn't matter, Dr. Watchman. I've got that old-fashioned feeling. This is it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But for now, you and Betty and I must get back to work. The cosmic scales are tipping now. In an army hospital, a boy's life is slowly dropping. Slowly. And across the scales, the microbe with the Latin name produces a new drug of hope. That new drug is in the yes-no limbo of medical research and at this stage should be called only promising. Only promising. Johnny's worse, Doctor, and I'm so worried. That's why I came to your office to see you. Well, I don't want to hide anything from you, Julie. You're right. Johnny has developed an inflammation of the inner lining of the heart. That's pretty bad, isn't it, Major? Yes, it is. Believe me, we're doing everything we can for him. Everything but curing him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd give a great deal, Julie, to be able to cure him. The germ in Johnny's bloodstream is lodged in his heart, and we just don't have a drug to knock it out. But I'm a little more hopeful, Julie. Remember that research work I mentioned to you? Those doctors over in New Jersey, uh-huh. have they found something? Yes, a drug they call streptomycin. Can't we try it? Where do we get some? It's too soon for that. We can't give a sick man a new drug that hasn't been checked and rechecked in the laboratory. Well, I don't know how long that kind of work takes, doctor, but I hope they hurry. I hope they hurry. <laughs> Listening to Winner Takes Life, starring Paul Lucas, Anne Rutherford, and Jackie Cooper on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Johnny came through the war with a wound, a bullet wound they could understand and heal. But now he lies in an army hospital with a wound of the heart, a disease of the heart caused by an unseen enemy, an invincible enemy. Johnny's heart still beats. It will not yield to its dark antagonist. If there is value to his life, it must be measured by the stars. For that which might someday save Johnny is research, which must grow astronomically. Laboratory test upon test by the hundreds, checking, rechecking. Scientists holding up the little lamp of human intelligence against a universe of shadows. Al. Al. Yes, sir. Come in here right away. What, what, what's the matter, Doctor? Look. Look at the cartridge growing here. Oh. This flask. Yes, sir. And look at this flask. Yes, sir. And here, look at this third cartridge. Yes, sir. I, I know. The streptomycin yield is slowing down. Slowing? You mean stopping. Look, the microbes have stopped working for it. They are not producing any more drugs. And just when we were getting lab production started into high gear, what causes that, Doctor? They change these microbes. They more modify, like people almost. One generation to the next. Yeah, what a rotten break. But it's too good. Faptomycin is too good. It's too promising. We can't let it drop this way. We've got to figure out some answer. I think I've got it. Look, remember we took one of the original strains of streptomyces grease used out of the farm soil, didn't we? Yes. It grew strong in that soil. So let's put it back into the soil to see if it can become rejuvenated. I don't know. It sounds tricky. What if it doesn't work? Well, well, we'll just have to start all over again, you optimist. <laughs> Let 
Let's see those new cultures there. Open the incubator. Yes, sir. Hey, they look good, Dr. Waxman. You were right. Putting those microbes back into the soil gave them a new lease on life. They're producing streptomycin all over the place. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now we are ready to start all over again. Johnny. Is that you, Joey? Yes, Johnny. Oh, it's, it's hard to breathe. It hurts. Open a window. Gee, I, I can't, Johnny. Send a shower outside. Oh, I feel so warm. Oh, heart trouble. Spelled L O V E. Yeah. You'll be better in a few months, Johnny. We'll get married in October. It's a beautiful month, October. Does the doctor still give me a chance, Julie? Sure. Sure. Sure he does, Johnny. Dr. Waxman. Dr. Washman. What's the matter? Al? Look, 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 look at the mice in this cage. Just look at them. Well, well, don't you see? They're alive. These are part of the group we inoculated the disease germs last week? Sure, sure. And the others, they are alive too? All but one. The mice with blood poisoning? Alive. They all recovered and they stayed alive. Uh, and the one with the bad heart infection? They've recovered, everyone but one. Autopsies show the infection of the heart lining has cleared up completely. Now, that's fine. <laughs> now, that's fine, huh? Uh, well, I should say, uh, very encouraging, at least. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe someday we'll be helping human heart cases. Maybe. Oh, don't, don't worry. I'm not celebrating yet, Doctor, but... Well, after all, we've proved streptomycin can knock out disease germs in laboratory animals. Sure. And the animals survive the treatment as well as the disease. Sure. And that's not so bad. That's, that's way ahead of our old streptothrysin. You're right, Al. And maybe if we go very carefully, maybe we can begin clinical tests with our first human patients, huh? Men are not mice. Clinical tests of a new drug with human patients is the end of the race, not the beginning. It is the ultimate gamble for victory over selected diseases in laboratory animals under controlled conditions is not victory for the sick man. Doctors are never sure that victory in the laboratory will mean victory in the sick room. Johnny? Can you hear me, Johnny? I brought Julie to see you. Julie? The doctor said I could see you a minute. Why? I'm glad you... Don't talk, Johnny. You don't have to talk now. I'm getting sort of scared, Julie. Don't give up, Johnny. Hold on, Johnny. They're doing everything they can for you. Just hold on tight. boy is dying, General. I think the time has come when we should try that new drug, streptomycin. You're uh, sure none of the established methods of treatment will help the boy? Absolutely certain, General. His blood cultures are positive for Haemophilus influenza. Penicillin resistant. We've tried everything. I personally am a little gun shy, Major. Remember the sulfur drugs? Results were so good at first, the public began expecting miracles. Then the negative reaction started. And penicillin. It's the most wonderful drug I've ever used. But it doesn't do all the things people think it does. Nobody's claiming anything for streptomycin yet, sir. Not even miracles. But Waxman has tested it very thoroughly. Other laboratories have begun to check his results. But, Major, there's hardly any production of the drug yet. What if you run out of your supply? It's a chance I've got to take. You're asking for a tough decision, Major. After all, the drug has never been tried with human patients before. I realize that, sir, but... 
The boy will be dead before the end of this month. Streptomycin is his only hope. All right. Then we've got to try it. Hello? Hello, yes. This is Dr. Buxman speaking. What's that? At the Army General Hospital? When? Heart case, huh? And he's still in resistance? I see. And and how's the boy now? Uh, oh. Oh, yes, I see. Well, please keep me informed, will you? Johnny lies flat on his bed now, face flushed with fever from the battle of the microbes within his body. The swiftest route to the battlefield of his heart is through the channels of the bloodstream. So the new drug will be injected by vein. Two army doctors, a nurse, a quiet, tired boy, and streptomycin. Easy now, son. Easy. Waxman's uh, laboratory tests really looked promising, didn't they, Major? Yes, sir. I saw them myself, sir. Well, here it is. Streptomycin. What about wide toxic limits? We've got to watch overdosing this boy. After all, a new drug... Yes, sir. We'll watch for toxic effects. That's the only way to make sure. Starting with a small dosage. All right, miss. <clears throat> Hold your arm still now, son. That's it. Nurse. Sir. What's this white blood cell count? 15,000. Yesterday? 18,000. Blood culture still positive. Uh, not so good. Sedimentation rate? 50 millimeters. Let's, uh, let's add a half gram to the streptomycin dosage. We're watching. Dr. Waxman. Yes, yes, yes. Put him on. Hello, Major. Now, how's that boy? Six a day on streptomycin, isn't it? You did? Blood culture what? Oh. Better watch the serum concentration. Sure it could happen. Yes, do that, will you? Oh, I hope he pulls through. Let me have Johnny's chart. Yes, sir. Oh, white cell count. Well, sedimentation rate lower. Blood cultures negative. How does it look, Doctor? It looks very promising. Very promising indeed. Hello? Oh, oh, yes, Major. Yes. He is? Good. Uh-huh. Sedimentation rate down to 10? That's good. And blood cultures? Negative? And temperature? What? I don't believe it, General. I just can't believe it. Oh, John. You never say die, McGinty. Come over here, McDuff. Oh, oh, easy there. Take it easy. The Major said you're not all cured yet. But I'm out in the clear. Out in the clear. Could a guy who looks foolish in this hospital rig interest a pretty girl like you in a little romantic proposition? Oh, Johnny. He certainly could. <laughs> Johnny wins, and winner takes life.
streptomycin, the winning card in Johnny's hand, was put there by a man he will never know, Dr. Selman A. Waxman, whose endless work and experiments in the laboratory at Rutgers, New Jersey State University, made his life and happiness possible. We have moved far ahead of those days back in 1945, Streptomycin production has gone up at many companies, for instance, at Merck Laboratories, the pioneer producers of streptomycin. Scientific investigators, such as Drs. Hinshaw and Feldman, indicate that perhaps the greatest promise of streptomycin today is in certain selected cases of tuberculosis. It is the result of untiring research, and research will go on tomorrow and the days after. For there are new fires to be lighted in the great darkness of the unknown. I'm sure our radio audience joins us here tonight in applauding Paul Lucas and Rutherford, Jackie Cooper, and the rest of tonight's cast on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. The streptomycin that comes from the good earth is one of several highly effective new drugs developed within the last few years by research. Research goes on here at Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey. Research goes on in 14 DuPont laboratories in New Jersey. There is a constant flow of ideas back and forth among all of the men and women, wherever they may be, who engage in the never-ending search for better things. Frequently... Universities like Rutgers conduct special investigations for industry. Industry, for its part, often has information or scarce materials needed to carry on research work at colleges. It is worthy of mention, too, that a graduate student here at Rutgers is making advanced studies in his chosen field on a DuPont Fellowship Grant, one of many fellowships awarded to universities each year by the DuPont Company and other American industrial concerns. This spirit of cooperation, which marks the scientist, is found in the laboratories, the plants, the offices of the DuPont Company. It is expressed by the 18,000 DuPont men and women who live and work in New Jersey. Since 1880, the DuPont Company has been represented in New Jersey by its Rapano Works near Gibbstown. Located there also is the Eastern Laboratory, one of the first industrial research laboratories in the United States. And just 50 years ago this month, Ground was cleared on Keenan's farm for the DuPont Finishes plant at Paul Inn. Next to it stands the DuPont Photo Products plant, where more than 2,000 men and women make motion picture film. Here in New Brunswick, where Cavalcade originates tonight, is the DuPont Fine Chemicals plant. Nine other plants in the state make DuPont formaldehyde, ceramic colors, DDT, industrial chemicals, plastics, explosives, pigments, dye stuffs, neoprene, Freon fluorine refrigerants, and many other products. The DuPont men and women who work in these plants help to make New Jersey one of the great industrial states of the nation. As with men and women in other DuPont plants across the country, they produce better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, our star will be Leo G. Carroll, whose screen portrayals in Wuthering Heights, Rebecca, Spellbound, and The House on 92nd Street augment a distinguished career in the theater. Mr. Carroll will appear in an original cavalcade play, Lee of Virginia, a deeply moving drama of Robert E. Lee and his service as president of the university that today bears his name, Washington and Lee at Lexington, Virginia. We invite you to listen next week to Leo G. Carroll in Lee of Virginia on the Cavalcade of America. Tonight's original DuPont cavalcade, Winner Takes Life, was written by Bernard Victor Dreyer. Your narrator was Ted Pearson. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company inviting you to listen next week to Lee of Virginia, starring Leo G. Carroll on The Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.